Ant Group, China's financial technology giant affiliated with the e-commerce company Alibaba, is getting ready to go public in both Shanghai and Hong Kong. The company is valued at $250 billion and is expected to raise $35 billion from the initial public offering. The proceeds will likely break the $29 billion record created by Saudi Aramco last year. In this video, we'll share with you Ant Group's development path, its business model, the competitive advantages and potential risks for investors. How does Ant Group make money? In 2004, Alibaba established Alipay, which has grown to become a widely adopted digital payment service provider. Alipay was spun off in 2011 and renamed Ant Financial in 2014. Earlier this year, it was renamed again as Ant Group to emphasize its technology instead of financial services. According to its registration document, Alibaba owns about a 33% stake in the company, and the founder, Jack Ma, controls 50.5% of the voting rights. As of June, Alipay had 711 million active monthly users and 1 billion annual active users. The system was adopted by 80 million businesses. The total transaction volume reached 118 trillion yuan, or about $17 trillion in the year to June including 622 billion yuan of international transactions. The numbers certainly look impressive. Other than digital payments, Ant provides services in wealth management, credit reporting, lending, and insurance. According to the company, 80% of its customers use at least three of its services, while 40% use all five of them. The company offers two consumer lending platforms. One is named Huabei, which in Chinese means just spend. It usually lets younger consumers that don't qualify for bank-issued credit cards borrow money. The other is called Jaibei, which means just borrow, and provides unsecured term loans. The income from consumers and small business loans has risen quickly, creating about $4.15 billion, or 39% of the total income in the first six months of 2020. Mobile payments came second, and took up about 36% of the revenue. Yuabeo, which allows Alipay users to invest their spare cash, was introduced in 2013. Although faced with regulatory restrictions, the platform had 500 million users and 4.1 trillion yuan of asset under management as of June 30th. Overall, Ant Group reported 20 billion yuan in non-IFRS 2019 profits after losing 18.3 billion yuan in 2018 due to aggressive marketing campaigns. Competitive Advantage The number of useful features makes Alipay way more comprehensive and convenient than America's PayPal and Apple Pay. It serves users in almost every aspect of their financial life. The company calls it a ubiquitous super app. The mobile payment as a core function helps the company obtain new users who will likely be tempted to try all the other profitable offerings. According to iResearch, Alipay holds 55.4% of China's payments market. Its competitor, WeChat Pay, takes another 38.8%. The data generated by the 1 billion consumers and 80 million business customers has allowed the company to build its own credit score system, further adding to the competitive advantage. Such a scale has made the company a challenge to the traditional banking system. Much of the decision-making, the data, the risk analysis, the rules, the financial product. It is all designed by the tech company, not the bank," said Martin Chorzempa at the Peterson Institute of International Economics. The banks provide the capital, but in a way, the banks are becoming dumb pipes, vying for customers and businesses on the platforms of the big tech giants. The primary competition comes from Tencent, the company that operates WeChat Pay. They are the two major digital payment platforms in China. Still, Alipay has been getting ahead in other areas of the business. Overseas Expansion Given Alipay's dominant position in China, it is not surprising that Ant Group has been trying to expand globally. And although it serves 190 countries, PayPal only has about 346 million active users. In 2017, Ant Financial entered a deal to buy American money transfer service provider MoneyGram which has 350,000 locations serving a network of around 2.4 million bank and mobile accounts across 200 countries. The deal was blocked by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. This deal fell apart because Ant Financial is from China, 
a country that has little credibility when it comes to protecting personal data, said Scott Kennedy, a fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. But in 2019, Ant Financial entered into an agreement to deploy the Alipay system in Walgreens, one of the largest American pharmacy store chains. The collaboration was expected to help serve millions of Chinese travelers in the United States. Ant Financial also established partnerships with the UK's Barclay Card, Spain's Momo Pocket, and Austria's Blue Code. According to IEO.com, a Chinese website for emerging industry entrepreneurs, Ant Group has set up subsidiaries in at least 14 countries and regions. It has entered into collaboration agreements with at least 25 countries and has implemented its platform for enterprises in 54 countries, and it has investments in American, British, and Singaporean financial industries. It seems Ant Group has become a valuable conglomerate for the world's second largest economy. But what are the potential risks for investors? The secretive IPO process. Companies usually recruit help from investment banks to underwrite the IPOs and market the securities to investors. Often, one bank would act as the lead underwriter that oversees the entire process, and the banks generally have to sign confidentiality agreements. For Ant Group's IPO, the Hong Kong leg will be sponsored by Citigroup, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and China's CICC. The Shanghai side will be handled by the CICC and China Securities Company. But according to Reuters, Ant Group has been following some highly unusual processes that have caused difficulties and confusion. For example, the underwriting job was divided up so that even the lead banks don't have the complete picture of the offering. Such unusual measures were taken during Alibaba's IPO in 2014. Regardless, the company has received preferential treatment in Shanghai and Hong Kong. In both places, the average processing time was four months for other listings that received IPO approvals in September. But for Ant Group, the Shanghai Stock Exchange cleared its listing in 24 days, while the Hong Kong Stock Exchange gave the green light within less than two months. Fraser Howey, an independent commentator and author of the book titled Red Capitalism, The Fragile Financial Foundation of China's Extraordinary Rise, believes the speedy processing shows the deal's importance to mainland China and Hong Kong. It's what everyone wants, so we'll rush it through, Howie said. It bodes badly for those who care about maintaining standards. It sends a bad signal. High integration with the CCP. In mainland China, it is hard for civilian-run businesses to thrive without close relationships with the Chinese Communist Party. Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba and Ant Group, was often assumed to be politically unattached until November 2018, when state media, the People's Daily, listed him as a member of the CCP. In fact, large internet companies like Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, JD, and Sina all have their own Communist Party committees. Xia Xiaofeng, the secretary of Alibaba's Communist Party committee, revealed that the committee was established in 2000, not long after Alibaba was founded in 1999. Ant Group has one of its own. As of early 2018, the two companies' party committees had close to 200 branches and over 7,000 CCP members, growing at 600 members per year. And the two companies' most critical management positions were held by CCP members. Ma has been a vocal supporter of the CCP's general secretary, Xi Jinping, and Ant Group has been participating in the regime's controversial social credit system that is meant to track Chinese people's every movement. The CCP passed the National Intelligence Law in 2017, and Article 7 stated that all organizations and individuals must, quote, support, assist, and cooperate when it comes to national intelligence and keep the work a secret. This means the CCP can get its hands on any company's customer information in the name of national intelligence. Besides direct ties to the Chinese government, both Alibaba and Ant Group are backed by top CCP bigwigs. China's highest leadership group is the Politburo Standing Committee, since 2002, over 20 of its members had their children and grandchildren taking executive positions in four Chinese companies with stakes in Alibaba. The most famous among them might be Jiang Zhicheng. He is the grandson of former CCP General Secretary Jiang Zemin and controls Boyu Capital. In 2012, Boyu invested $400 million in Alibaba and made a $1 billion profit after its IPO in 2014. As for Ant Group, 
Boyu holds about 1% of its Class A shares and 2% of Class C shares. This close involvement with the CCP has allowed Alibaba and Ant Group to achieve fast growth, but it could also lead to their management choosing to serve the CCP's needs over investors' interest. The ties also increase the risk of them getting caught in the middle of U.S.-China conflicts. Potential U.S. Sanctions At present, less than 5% of Ant Group's revenue is derived from outside China, making the company seem mostly immune to international conflicts. But investors are probably hoping for growth beyond the Chinese market, and according to the Financial Times, the company plans to use 10% of the IPO proceeds for international expansion. Therefore, foreign government stance towards the company may be more relevant than it seems. In August, the White House announced the Clean Network Program to block IT vendors it doesn't trust, especially those that work with the CCP. Freedom-loving nations must come together to confront the CCP's aggressive behavior. And the good news is the tide is absolutely turning. Pompeo also name-checked Alibaba when urging American companies to remove untrusted Chinese-owned technology from their digital networks. The U.S. has already been taking aim at Ant Group. On October 9th, Senator Marco Rubio said in a statement, quote, It's outrageous that Wall Street is rewarding the Chinese Communist Party's blatant crackdown on Hong Kong's freedom and autonomy by orchestrating Ant Group's IPO on the Hong Kong and Shanghai stock exchanges. On October 14th, Reuters reported that the U.S. State Department had submitted a proposal to add Ant Group to a trade blacklist. The United States alone might not be enough to curb the expansion of China's technology companies, but its effort to ban Huawei from participating in the 5G networks has been followed by countries like the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. And we might not want to rule out the possibility the same could happen to Ant Group's digital payment platform. So far, we have touched on Ant Group's history, its operations, and competitive advantage, and the potential risks for investors. What's your opinion about this company as an investment opportunity? Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching Unseen Fortunes. If you enjoyed our content, please click like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.